Uh, we have Mark here. He's one of our tenants uh, from the Belmoral. Mark? To the owners of these buildings, shame on you. I've sat back, I've sat back and watched as the rat population has multiplied and the building is slowly filled with black mold, bathroom by bathroom. I have observed as the place has fallen farther and farther into decrepancy and nothing has been done about it. We've heard orders, we've heard that um, they've been fined and told to improve things, fix this, fix that. Things don't get fixed. And I have to wonder all the way along, why? Why is it that they're given orders to fix things and it doesn't happen? Just the other day, we had a fire on our floor. Unexpected fire. So, I ran and grabbed the fire hose, pulled it out to full length, went through the drill I've been through a hundred times before. I've put out at least a half dozen fires in these buildings, one or the other. So, I yelled to my friend at the other end of the hose, turn the water on. He turned the faucet on, the, the fire hose water on, no water. No water. We've got a room ablaze and there's no water. So, I dropped the hose, ran down a floor, grabbed another hose, ran it out to full extension, ran back, because by now I'd lost my partner. He was not stupid enough to hang around. Turned the water on myself. No water. Still no water. Same story a floor above. No water to put out a fire. I don't know how the fire department did it, but there was no water available to put out a fire. Which leads me to my, my room. My uh, hot water was shut off about four months ago. And then in response to my daily complaining about it, my cold water was shut off too. I've complained about that every single day. And the, the water just, uh, I was treated as if I was, uh, uh, I was speaking in some foreign language they'd never heard. But the water never did get turned back on. My room still has no water. There were times when there was no water on the floor either, not in the bathrooms at all. Um, I've seen people with serious mental disabilities um, having, a, having serious episodes where they needed help. And what they needed was real help. And the response they got was someone entering their room with a great big stick. And uh, when they continued to freak out, the person left their room and came, went out asking a, a tenants for a bigger stick. This is not a joke, this is serious. That's their response to how to deal with a major psychotic episode. A bigger stick. Now, I didn't actually see what happened, but I heard the stick hitting hard and someone screaming in pain right after that. So I can only imagine. Is this an appropriate response to a psychotic breakdown? That's how staff here, that's how the manager of this building seems to think that this, this should be dealt with. Yeah, well, fortunately we're a little more civilized than that, aren't we? Yeah, we don't resort to this stick. Hopefully, we should be able to resort to words. The big problem is that we're never heard. And... If we can start being heard, then maybe we can get something done about this because Canadians will not tolerate this. If they knew what was going on here, they would never have tolerated it in the first place. The big problem here all along has been that this has been kept quiet. No one knows what's going on. Canadians in general are not willing to accept this sort of treatment of people. This unequal, absolutely unequal human rights situation and I think that together we can all do something about it we can't do anything if we don't know what's going on can we how can we change this so that everyone knows now I just got the word today that uh, I got a, they got a place for me to go well 
It's a short-lived celebration. As I was going through the paperwork on the place, I found uh, I'm not allowed to have any visitors after 11 o'clock at night or before 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm a grown man. I'm 51 years old. Someone decides for me when I can and can't have visitors. Also, I'm not allowed to have visitors more than two nights a week. Overnight visitors more than two nights a week. Now, I'm a guy who's made my living restoring vintage bicycles. No, restoring vintage bicycles, not selling drugs. Who said that? Who's the smart ass who said that? Keep going, Mark. Keep going, keep going. There yeah, there's an assumption. There's an assumption. No, I, I find salvage bicycles that have been thrown away across the city and I restore them. I use my skills and my time and make them into something beautiful. And in this new building that I've been given as a place to live, I'm not allowed to have more than one bicycle. If I bring more than one bicycle in, staff will take it and throw it out. So, I've been provided with a prison to live in now. Is that really any better than a dungeon? No. No. I don't know. I find myself at that crossroads now. If I'm gonna go to prison, why don't I just go commit a crime? Hey, go to a real prison. Why not? Well, I won't do it because it's not in my basic makeup, but I can certainly see how a lot of people end up resorting to crime. This system's designed to make people resort to crime because it doesn't give any options. Someone out there, please, try to make sure that there's a, an option somewhere, a place for me to work on my bikes and be part of this community and contribute to this community, not be treated as a criminal and have my bikes taken from me. Last year, these guys took a hundred of my bicycles and threw them into the street because they were failing a, uh, an inspection and they suddenly wanted, decided that they wanted to make themselves look like they were being heroes and uh, being tough on bike theft. So they took a hundred of my legitimate, salvaged, broken 1970s and early 80s 10-speed bicycles, mostly frames and parts I hadn't even worked on yet, and threw them into the street. I ended up losing all of them. It was the, call, the, the, the result of five years of my work building up a small shop. They did this, they break and entered into my room that I was paying rent on took my bicycles without my permission or knowledge and threw them into the street and stole all my tools. <laughs> then they claimed they knew nothing about my tools and just uh, insisted that the bicycles were all stolen so they could do that if they wanted to. Well, anybody who knows me knows that there was no stolen bicycles or anything to do with anything stolen amongst any of that. But that was the result of genuine hard work. Is this okay? Does someone out there have a garage for me to work in? Hey, that's what I need. I need a garage facing a back alley so I get a city business license. Do you think I can find that somewhere in this city? It should be right there. Yes, you can. Right there at the bottom of that condo tower. Well, I'm ready to work for real. Somebody step up, please. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark.